you, Jesus, for this dance. You know, we don't give enough glory to God when he deserves it all. His name alone. Glory to your name.
beautiful. I want to ask everyone as we ask in every meeting. Y'all know what I ask. My archdeacon will come down and represent our finance committee. Our archdeacon, I have him to come down. Yeah, along with the overseer. And then your from your finance committee, he's okay, they're already there. Okay. We ask for everybody that's participating, please give no less than a $20 offering. My wife is writing a check out now to Christian Ministries for $100 for us. But I don't envision you all have never let me down. Everything I've asked you for, you have always done. You have always done. Some of y'all had some free barbecue today. Some of y'all had some free barbecue ribs and chicken after service. So yeah, give us, give us some money. Help us get this money raised. I'm going to ask my good friend and buddy, Pastor Henry Lumber, to travel all the way from Cleveland to come and pray God's blessing over this offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Yes. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice in. Yes. Lord, as we come and give our offering unto you, Lord, we ask that you bless each and every family here, Lord. Yes. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord, we ask that you anoint them, Lord. We ask that you heal, Lord. We ask that you deliver. We ask that you set free, Lord. We thank you because you're God and you died all by yourself. Without you, we could do nothing. So, Lord, as we come, we well, ask that you bless every household, everybody here that is represented today, Lord. We ask that you give them a blessing. Pour all the blessing that they don't have room enough for this year. And we be mindful to give you the glory, give you the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. And we'll let the church say, Amen. Lord, how can we 
said thanks for all of the things you've done for us. So many things we did not deserve, yet you Presence 
of the Lord. There was a day when his sons, his daughters, were eating and drinking wine in the eldest house, eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job. Somebody say bad news. Bad news. The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. It ain't over yet. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out of three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Stay with me. Then Job arose, rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave. Somebody said, The Lord gave. The Lord gave. And the Lord taken it away. But bless it. Somebody holler, bless it. We can hurry up and get out of here if you have me preach. Bless it. Be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sin not, nor charge God foolishly. You can be seated. Let me just bore your patience with verse number 21. Now, I want to go to verse 20. Then Job arose. Rid his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground, and somebody said, Worship. Uh, now, since we have made it through this pandemic, this pandemic that has literally tested all of us as believers our faith and whether or not we're going to return to the church, as I look in here and I look around, I don't see but maybe one or two people with masks on, and that may be because they're older or they have a low immune system. But it seems like all of us have made it out by the grace of God. Those of us that are here and alive and well, we're here by the grace of, grace of God. So if I just had to tickle your fancy on this afternoon, I don't care what you go through, you still have God. In the midst of turmoil, in the midst of circumstances, no matter what you lose or have lost, it is a wonderful thing that you recognize and understand. I may have lost some stuff. I wish I had some help in here. But I still have God. And as long as you have God, everything, somebody how everything is going to be all right. Well, when we look at the story, let's, let's examine the story and the text. The Bible says that uh, Satan, and we have been studying in the book of Revelation, I used to teach this a different way until I found out in my studies that Satan somewhat had limited access to heaven. I found that hard to believe myself since he was cast out of heaven, but when we went through our Revelation series, I found out that Satan had limited access toward heaven, in heaven. And the Bible says that when the angels, and we know that the angels of God ascend and descend, angels are nothing but messengers. They carry the message from God to us, and then our response to him back to God. And the Bible said that the angels came to receive their next assignment from God, and Satan came also. And God, who has been watching the enemy because
because God is omnipresent. He's every place, everywhere, at the same time. That is something that Satan is not. He is not omnipresent. And God wants us to understand. He asked him the question, and the question was this. He said, Satan, what you been doing? And Satan, this is fascinating to me. Even though Satan is damned to damnation, he knows what the end of a story is going to be. He still is submissive and has to answer to the higher authority. Yeah. Uh, 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 okay. And so when God asked him, he said, what are you doing? And God already knew what Satan had been doing and who he had been watching. I got news for some of y'all. Satan is watching you. Watching your lifestyle. Watching, watching, watching you outside the four walls of the church. Anybody can act like a saint when we get here. We know what to do. We know how to fan. We know how to clap. We know how to shout and dance. But Satan don't care nothing about your clapping. You're fanning, and I, can I help somebody? And you're speaking in tongues. He waits for you to come outside of the doors of this church. And the Bible says that he is at the throne of God accusing you falsely. Yeah. Trying to get God not to give you another chance. Yes, I know. And the Bible says, the Bible says that when Satan came, God recognized him and said, What do you want? What are you doing? He said, I'm going to and fro. Yes. So he's not omnipresent. Satan is not every place, everywhere at the same time. How many thank God that we serve a God that is everywhere, every place at the same time? I got news that God is over in Australia. He's over in Russia. He's down in China. He's down in the Caribbean. God it's everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. Yeah. And so when Satan answered, now let, let's follow the story. And I'm not going to be long. He said, walking to and fro throughout the earth, seeking whom I can devour means to destroy. Yeah. I want to destroy marriage. Yeah. I want to destroy family. I want to destroy relationship, but in specifically, he wants to destroy those who have a heart and who love God. And God knowing what and who he was trying to destroy, God put him up on he put him up on front street as you young folk would say. And God said, Have you considered my servant Job? In other words, I know who you have to say to. I'm just going to address you and let you know you can't do nothing with Job. That's right. Because Job loves me with all his heart and with all his might and all his strength. Yeah. But Satan, can I help y'all? Thinks he knows you better than you know yourself. Wow. Is there anybody here that's grateful to God that God knows what test you will pass yeah. Yeah. and what test you cannot pass?
got a fancy house. He got sheep and cattle. Uh, he's got oxen. He's got all of these things. Uh, he's got seven sons uh, and three daughters. Uh, and you put a hedge around him. Uh, somebody say, I got a hedge around me. Uh, now the Bible says uh, that the angels in camp uh, round about fear uh, that fear him. Uh, if you are a believer in this house, uh, I got news for you this afternoon. Uh, you got angels uh, that's around your house. Uh, angels uh, that's around your car. Uh, angels uh, that's around your faith. Uh, angels uh, that watch over you. Uh, I got somebody to holler. I've got an angel. And they are in camp round about me. Uh, and God said, that's all right. Uh, I'm going to loose the angels. Uh, I'm going to open the gate. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, Satan, because uh, I know Joe uh, better than you know him yourself. Uh, I'm going to allow you, uh, oh my God, Satan, let me say that again. I'm going to allow you uh, to do whatever you think you can do. Uh, because Satan, you told me uh, that if I take his money, uh, if I take all of his things, uh, if I take his stuff, uh, you told me uh, that he will curse me to my face. Uh,
life that you was given on the day. So, Father God, I'm saying, eyes haven't seen, hallelujah, and ears have not heard, hallelujah, what God's plan is for this building. I pray, Father God, that you keep each and every angel in each and every corner in this building. I pray, Father God, that they financially be blessed in this building, Father God. We praise you, we worship you, and we bless you. Holy, holy name. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Oh, it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together because this is the day that you have made. Yes. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful building, Lord, that you have blessed these people with, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our lives, our hearts, and our strength. We give you praise and honor and thanksgiving. Lord, we ask Lord to bless every pew, bless every window, bless every door. Let your blessings come upon this house in the name of Jesus. Lord, because you are God, and we realize there is no other besides you in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, bless their boy.
east and the west, oh God. We pray that you will bless daycare, oh God. We pray that you will bless every room in this edifice, oh God. That it will impact this community, oh God. Father God, even as we heard on the word today, oh God, even as you send the people in, God, we pray that you would allow them to strengthen themselves so they will come to a place of worship in you, God. That this will be a house of worship, oh God. Where they will, they will be examples of their leaders, oh God. Not in there, oh God, but you would bless Bishop Frankie L. Quinn and First Lady Quinn, oh God. As you see the unity in between them, that it will trickle down and it will affect the parishioners, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And then, God, we bless any foul spirit that will try to come in this place, oh God. No weapon formed against them shall ever prosper, oh God. But, Father God, just pack your angels all over, oh God. Let them be the light in this community, oh God. Release your people, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For we love them, God. And we thank you for the fellowship, God. We are just sisters and brothers in Christ, and we love them. Bless this house with your presence in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. You get the glory. You get the honor. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Pastor Sabrina, Lord, and our overseer, the Lord's name.
over this house. So you get up and have all your leaders come and pray. God's blessing. And then my wife prophesies to your wife. Well, I got news for you. God told me to tell you. Look at this car. It's time for us to sanctify. We got to dance. Because I heard God in the Holy Ghost say that when we dance, we're going to scare the enemy. We're going to scare the lives of the wicked one. And he's going to run out of that door. I just need 10 people that will dance with me. You only got two minutes already. Come on, say one, two, three. Thank <laughs> you. 